Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-26. When last we met, our heroes faced off with a Cyclops and Etten after crossing the Northern Plains. The group did not come out unscathed, with Brother Stance of the Verte Order down and nearly crushed by a falling Cyclops. The group has pulled his lifeless body out of the rubble by a strange tower structure, but he is unresponsive. We now join the group as they prepare magical healing to save the monk's life. Get him up! Get him up! ordered Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus. We need room to work on him. Yolanda and Phidias were the only ones able to get down to where the monk had fallen due to the size of the Cyclops that had nearly buried him. The small pair heaved with all their might and managed to get an arm and a portion of the robe up to Sir Omel and Grish, the cleric, who quickly and unceremoniously dumped him on the back of the Cyclops. The pair began incantations of healing as the gnome and Denali fighter extricated themselves from the gap. Harris the mage quickly ran to both sides of the tower to make sure additional trouble did not present itself. Glowing hands and magical spells quickly brought Stance back from the pit of death and he gasped for air as he rose up before slumping back down and sliding down the Cyclops before being grabbed by the two larger men. Is... is he okay? chimed in Phidias and Yolanda as a fearful look crossed their faces. Grish nodded silently and wiped the sweat from his brow. What do you think? he said in a hushed tone to the Knight of Bacchus. I think it was close, came the reply from the warrior. Almost too close. Sir Omel looked down to the gnome and the fighter. I think he'll be okay. Sometimes when you come that close to the threshold, it's a system shock. He appears to be breathing on his own, and his skin color is starting to come back. All exhaled a sigh of relief as Harris ran over and received the news that Stance would live. Nodding quickly, the wizard returned back to his watch post, giving a thumbs up to the group as he returned. Grish and Omel gently lowered the body of the monk down to the ground and reported that while he would live, he wouldn't be able to adventure for at least a full day. Yolanda and Phidias retrieved the horses and prepared to make camp. The pair examined the area and found a rocky and somewhat out of the way bluff several hundred yards away. It was decided that this discreet distance would hopefully protect them from any interlopers. The largest members of the party gently carried their fallen comrade over to the camp where he was placed gently under a tent pitched by his friends. Harris rejoined the group and inquired on the monk's status. After finding out he would live, relief covered his face. Good, good, that's good news. He was obviously shaken. Grish asked him if he was able to scout out by the tower and Harris took a deep breath. <sighs> okay, he began. It looks like a watchtower of some kind that is using the stones from the area to make it blend in. The building is rather large, but can only accommodate something of their size, and one at a time. Further, I noticed a natural slope in the middle of the construction, which goes down into the cliffs. Yolanta interjected. Did you go in? Did you see any more of those? The mage shook his head and pointed out that he was not nearly powerful enough to go spelunking on his own. Phidias asked if the opening could be covered, but was told that it would take a rather large cave-in to accomplish that, and it would certainly give away their position if done. Omel asked, So you want to take a wait-and-see approach? Harris nodded to the affirmative, and the groups added their nods. With Stance out for a day, and you and I beat up, we're all going to need some rest. It will be dark soon, and hopefully their friends aren't too close by. We can rest up, and continue down the cliff or go back home in the morning. Omel continued and said he could take first watch while the others got some sleep. King Pellet rose and pointed his finger at Grish, 
I command you to kill your friends. Prove your loyalty, cleric, or perish with them. Grish looked at his king, then shifted his glance to the group. My lord, he pleaded, I cannot. These people have been nothing but honorable. I will stand with them. The king stepped off the dais and began to poke the large Zenobian in the forehead with his finger. Kill them. Kill them now. As the cleric brushed away the king's finger, he felt a sharp pain in the hand and blinked his eyes. He found himself wide awake, sweating on a small outcropping on the cliff. Another stone ricocheted off his chest, and he realized it was all a nightmare. He found the source of the stones in the form of Omel, trying to rouse him from his sleep. When the pair made eye contact, he was waved over by the Knight of Bacchus and motioned to stay low. What the Hades is your problem, said the warrior in a hushed tone. Your little dream has gotten us into a spot of trouble. Still confused from the fitful sleep, he attempted to focus. I I'm sorry, I was having a dream, he stammered. What's up? Omel nodded his head towards the open plain, and Grish observed a pair of large woolugs sniffing the bodies of the dead by the tower. I think they heard you yelling, no, in your sleep. They got here a few minutes ago, said Omel. Grish surveyed the scene and pointed out that the two had come close enough that they probably should be dealt with. Sometimes those things are guard dogs for giants. We should eliminate them if we can. The knight nodded and both men sat, lying in wait for the creatures to get closer. A few moments went by and the wargs picked up the party's scent and began to move towards the outcropping. As they reached the precipice, both cleric and knight jumped from their vantage point and crushed the creatures silently before slinking back to their concealment. Were they alone? hissed Grish. Omel nodded. Yeah, I don't see any movement in the moonlight. What was up with all that moaning and no, no, no crap? asked the knight. Were you having a go with some tavern winches? Grish smiled weakly and shoved off the comment. Just a bad dream, my friend. Nothing to be concerned about. The sun rose, blanketing the plains in warm sunlight against the cold breeze from the ocean. Stance adjusted his bloody bandages and began to make a simple breakfast. Harris, the mage, stirred and asked, How do you feel, my friend? The monk winced as he tested his injuries. I think someone dropped a castle on me, but I'll live. What happened? The wizard explained the fighting sequence and how they all thought he had died. After the recap, Stance was quiet for a few minutes and shook his head. Well, I guess I'm lucky to be alive, huh? So what's the plan? Harris pointed his thumb towards the plains as Yolanda and Phidias jumped down next to Grish and Omel. The group came together and Yolanda Two Blades explained what she and the gnome had discovered. It goes down about 20 feet and it's certainly big enough to support the size of that damn cyclops. Looks like a cave complex similar to the one by Red Bluffs. Grish nodded and spoke. Not surprising, the cliffs around here are as holy as say down cheese. Do we know if the heart is down here? asked Harris the mage. The group collectively shrugged and the Zenobian spoke. No, but if the giants are invading Denali, we should probably put a stop to it, don't you think? Aye, came the chorus from the group. Well then, the cleric continued, once more into the depths. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.